Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. Hey, everybody knows that CPUs for your PC, well, you need some thermal paste to transfer the heat efficiently from the hot CPU to your cooler and heatsink, right? So what about your GPU? Uh, yeah, it does. So today I'm going to be taking apart my 8800 GTS video card. This card's temperatures are idling around 64 Celsius. Idle, not under load. And within playing games under Windows Vista, it's getting in the high 80s sometimes, which probably isn't that good. I know everybody says that these cards tend to run hot and that's okay, but I think that we can improve performance and stop heating my house in the summertime when it's not necessary by taking this card apart, reapplying thermal paste, and seeing if it makes a difference. Keep in mind though, if you do this on a newer card, you void the warranty. So this should only be attempted if, like me, you have an older card. You probably know that that thermal paste is old, crusty, and brittle, like me. Oh, oh, let's leave those analogies to the side for now, okay? So let's get right into this, and let's start cleaning this card up and see if it makes a difference. Come on, let's get to it. So this is my 8800 640 meg GTS card. It's still in good shape, right? I've never used it for about mm, 10 years and I haven't replaced the thermal paste back then, so I'm sure that it needs it today. First, you'll need a few things for this. A clean area where you can work on your video card. It might get a little bit of thermal paste, residual stuff, alcohol, and whatever. So then you're gonna need a good toolkit with some some bits that are small and fit perfectly in these main board screws. Here we are here. This is my toolkit I use on almost every PC build. I'll put a link in the description below. If you're interested, check it out. You're gonna need some thermal paste. Any will do, but a good quality one will last and help reduce temps. This is just a MX4 thermal that I have. Maybe you wanna get some Q-tips, some other swabs that won't leave fibers or something. Q-tips may be not the best, but you can use coffee filters. Um, I've heard that that's good. You just don't want to leave residue on top of your chip. Maybe a plastic glove in case, you know, your hands are going to get into some isotropic alcohol. We need some isotropic alcohol to clean off the chip. So those are the main things you're going to need. Um, and you're going to have to keep track of the screws because sometimes the screws can be different lengths. So when you take them out, make sure you put them in an area that you know where they go back on. So it shouldn't be, it shouldn't take much force. So just start off by taking these screws off. And this screw right here has a spring. So do not lose that spring loaded screw because yeah, that wouldn't be good now, would it? Put those to the side. See how easy these are coming off? And basically, most of these are what attaches the PCB, the printed circuit board. So you have to take this off here, this screw here, because this will block this, and this might need to come off too to separate the two, but you might not need to. Might be able to bring this up and towards here. Apparently, you got to leave these screws in, the small ones here, but just take off these main ones. And you can see it's starting to come up off this PCB, but the old thermal pads from the memory is pretty stuck on there. But there you go. Be careful of this. This is uh, caked and all there is is like thermal pads on the chips, the memory chips themselves. One thing to note is that when you cleaning, you're cleaning your CPU here, don't go too zeal overzealous, but make sure everything's clean and get the gunk out. So, and there's a small chip here, but there's like resistors here. So when you do that one, just be careful not to hit the sides where the little red uh, tr tr resistors are because you could damage them. All right, well, let's get going and get some alcohol and clean this up a bit. So far, I mean, this is the first Q-tip and we can already start to see the NVIDIA logo, so that is not bad, right? 
and uh, it could get a little messy so just so this is cleaning up okay right and this card back in the day was fairly powerful so if you know it's just crusty I guess really not taking any effort at all is it just kind of flaking off try to keep it out of the heat sink can't say how it was doing very much good, do you? At least they're using a copper heatsink. That's a positive note, right? Let me move this off of here. I don't have any new thermal pads for this video card. If I did, I would replace them all. And the best thing I can do is just clean them up and so, uh, center them the best I can for now but clean off the copper surface the best I can and clean off the uh, chip and get some of the thermal paste and apply it liberally to the chip the chip just apply it and see how it looks not really spreading it really crazy I've seen things you know you say oh you need to spread it and I've seen other tests where a medium dollop press in the center and that basically got you what you needed this card basically had no thermal paste now it has thermal paste so let's just kind of line it up Like that, and that's the way it sits. I'm pressing down on it lightly, see if we can spread it out and then look at it. I'm sure it's got good coverage, but. So you can tell it's already sticking and holding it. But you can also see that I missed a few areas over on this side. It could cause the thermal spiking. And I am not an expert, but you know, by any means, so you can put your comments down in, in below if you'd like for this, but from what I'm saying is that it had zero active thermal paste. It was just crusty hard stuff and this will have a big benefit, whereas it had none before. So that's where I'm getting at. You can take the shroud off and clean inside here too. Sometimes it gets dusty and you can't get to it with um, uh, dust, a duster, but is good so far. And we'll just go ahead and reapply the screws and we will put it back in the Vista system and we will see if the temps on under idle have improved. And if they have, we have succeeded. And if under full load, they are less then we are good to go. And I haven't done this before in this card. I just did a few internet searches and I was careful, so hopefully it works. Just make sure you have all these holes on the underside lined up as well as the mounting front brackets that you need to take off too. So when you put them back on, everything is lined up and perfectly good. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get the screws in. And well, you will know immediately when you can't screw the darn thing in. So I suggest lining up the few key ones with the you know front and back don't tighten them completely and you might have to adjust it slightly but when you get a two three four in there then you can safely you know line up the front ones and stuff but if they're not going in then it's misaligned that's your tip for the day and if you look like this, you gotta make sure that these front brackets are hooked up too. And I forgot to show you me taking those off in the first part of the video. So make sure you take these front brackets off too, because these right here hold the uh, retention bracket to the video card heatsink. So do that.
maybe set up and monitor a few temps. And let's run this. S is back, is up to 19 now, yay! GPU temps running around 72. So I guess our temps are better. Roughly 10 Celsius from the reapplication and cleaning of new thermal paste. You know, that's not too terrible. I'll take that as a win. So clean and reapply new thermal paste to your video card, everyone. Especially if it's old.